What's up, Creepers, and welcome back to Headlines and Shenanigans. I think a better title for this episode might just be Headline. Yeah, we're not, and, and not a lot all. of shenanigans because going on we, in the world right not, now. Not a lot of shenanigans, not not ones that we care to touch on. Uh, no, there's a lot of, there's a lot going on in the world, and we are not the people to really give our opinions on what should be done. So. No. <laughs> But, but we do thing, anyways. No, I'm just kidding. One case that we do have that's been kind of permeating a lot of the news is something we can give our opinions on, though, Michael. Is it Samuel Haskell? It is Samuel Haskell. That Michael. has been permeating the news, as you say. Even though even Michael knows this, and this is some like Hollywood <laughs> news. Because, so, guys, last week on Headlines and Shenanigans, know. we kind of talked, we touched on Tupac's killer, and we touched on the Natalie Holloway case. Both of those have been, you know, relatively solved and got some good news to close on. Right. Uh, this case right now that we're going to talk about this week, this is an ongoing investigation as of when we're recording this episode. So I got this information uh, today. This is a, uh, November 16th. So as of today, this is the most recent reports that have come out. But uh, as Michael mentioned, we're going to be talking about Samuel Haskell. Uh, Samuel Haskell is the son of Hollywood agent Sam Haskell III. Uh, He has been arrested and charged with three counts of murder after the torso of an unidentified person believing to be his missing wife was wrapped in a plastic bag inside a dumpster five miles from his home and found in uh, Tarzana, California. Okay, so his dad is a... Legendary Hollywood agent? Yes, he is an agent, Michael. He's who the guy are some who of really, his clients? He's the guy who really makes these pictures happen. He's the guy you want who, to talk to. Who uh, are some of his clients? Man? So Sam Haskell you know? III had some pretty, uh, a pretty extensive resume of clients okay. throughout the years. He's been an agent for about 27, 37 years, I think. Okay. Uh, some of his like clients, who? he was a, an, an agent for the William Morris Endeavor. It's a Hollywood agency. Never heard of it. Uh, yeah, Michael. I don't think we're I don't think we're those kind of A-listers yet to get this kind of agency. <laughs> I think we're gonna get some kind of uh, some park bench agency, and uh, we're gonna get a Better Call Saul type of agent for us. <laughs> we're our own agency, Andy. That's the kind of agency we can afford. Some, That's some right. park bench agents. That's right. But uh, some of his clients did include George Clooney, okay, Ray Romano, okay, Debra, okay, Dolly Parton. Everybody How loves dare Dolly. you? Of Everybody course. loves Dolly. Lily Tomlin. Uh, Lucy Arnaz, uh-huh. uh, Debbie Allen, right. Kathy Lee Gifford, Whoopi Goldberg, and there's just a whole Jesus. list of other people. But those are some of the biggest A-listers this guy had. Yeah, what an what an eccentric bunch. Especially through like the late '80s or like '90s and stuff like that. You got Clooney, okay. Romano, Whoopi okay. Goldberg. This guy is a legendary Hollywood agent. Then, yeah, like I said, he's been in okay. the business for a little while. So he got he he's got quite a bit of money, and, and I'm guessing his son grew up. Uh, in a very very privileged lifestyle. Yeah, probably running around with some pretty uh, pretty uh, crazy A listers, getting to bump shoulders uh-huh. with some people. Probably never getting told no a lot. <laughs> no, probably not. But uh, yes, yeah, Samuel Haskell. This is Samuel Haskell the fourth. Oh, of course, That's the son who is actually charged for these crimes. Oh shit! Don't change it now. <laughs> He'll fix yeah, if it ain't broken, right? <laughs> I mean, we gotta keep doing this. But uh, they claim that on November 6th, uh, Haskell murdered his wife. Wow. May okay, Lee now they Haskell. might change it, actually. I yeah. take that back, Andy. Let's let's go ahead and change it after this guy. Yeah, we might have to. Ah, yeah. oh, damn it. Why did I name you George? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they said that Haskell murdered his wife, May Lee Haskell, 37, mm. and her parents, uh, 71-year-old Gao Xin Li and the 64-year-old oh Yan Jing Wan, uh, all of whom who which lived in the Haskell's home with their three children. Uh, so uh, authorities have yet to identify the torso that was found in the dumpster, but it is highly believed to be that of his wife, May Lee. Oh, my gosh. Um, I think it was could be kind of easier to identify if that was a torso of a 71-year-old man or a 64-year-old woman. Right, right. Compared to a 37-year-old woman. Mm. Uh, but the prosecutors have alleged that he murdered the three victims. Uh, at, he's age 35. That he hired some day laborers on November 7th to remove some black trash bags from his home. Now, usually when you hire some day laborers and like, especially in California, usually if like uh-huh. a construction job or maybe some remodeling or some painting or something to like a, a normal chore, but yeah. to just come get some trash bags out of your house. Yeah. Just some trash bags. That's like, why wouldn't you just put these out by the street? Like this is just trash. Um, like put it to the dumps, put it in the trash can. There's a dumpster. Why? Why you need to hire some day laborers? To, it's just already very suspicious to hire day laborers just to come to your home 
you, just to remove a few bags of trash. I mean, I can't believe you think that Samuel Haskell the Fourth would take out his own trash, Andy. The audacity of you. I mean, honestly. when the trash is full of body parts. Samuel Haskell the Fourth, sir. I'm just saying this is like this shows the kind of like I guess privileged <laughs> life. It's just like, oh, what am I gonna do with all these bodies in these trash bags? <laughs> I mean, I already used all my paper towels. I mean, I'm not taking this trash out. I mean, where right. does the trash even come? I don't even know. Just hit up Angie's list. Have somebody come pick it up. <laughs> Let me call my secretary. There we go. <laughs> I gotta figure out where the trash comes around here. Exactly. You know what? I'll just call call somebody. I'll get somebody. Yeah. To come I'll call an trash. Uber and then just throw it in the car. <laughs> I'll call an Uber Plus. <laughs> but uh, apparently, they they claim that Haskell paid them five hundred dollars to take the trash and dispose of it. Haskell said that they were filled with rocks. There's just yeah. some trash bags full bunch, of rocks. Just a bunch yeah. of rocks, man. Don't worry about it. Just Black go, go throw bags. those away. Here's 500 bucks, whatever. Yeah, rocks definitely don't just uh, f- oh. tra- tear through trash bags. Maybe he was doing some landscaping, Andy. What kind of rocks do you have that's going to be like that you kind know, of trash you, bags? You, you wanted to do away with the slate rock, slate rock uh, walkway. You know, you got a bag full of <laughs> you got a Not bag all full fresh astro turf in this house. That's right. <laughs> this yard is going to be perfect by the summertime. Maybe you're disassembling a koi pond. <laughs> you got a bunch of rocks. I don't know. Like I said, you, but when you were like me and Michael have done some construction jobs and some like home, <laughs> a few, uh, a few uh, home remodeling things here and there. When you have to remove a bunch of rocks, you don't put them in trash bags and call somebody to come pick them up. That's more of like no. a, we're going to put a wheelbarrow and take this to somewhere we just don't see it anymore for a while. <laughs> Yeah, this was a stupid mistake on his part. This is like you said, it's just entitlement. He really thought that, that nothing would come of this. Yeah, if it's I just too throw, important. If I just throw five hundred dollars at these people, they won't ask questions, right? Right. But uh, one of the day laborers told the news station that they could tell that they weren't rocks when they picked up the bags. I'm pretty sure you know what a bag of rocks feels like compared to a yeah. bag of body parts. Right. But uh, they were described as soft, and soggy, and they probably weighed about fifty pounds each. Very, very rock like. Yeah, very. Dizzy. Is it very, very rock? Is this a leaking? It's, very, it's a leaky rock. <laughs> this is it's the softest rock I've ever felt. I'm not gonna lie. Like I said, I feel like I'm just trying. It's like a guy trying to hold like a giant water balloon at this point. Just right. Like I don't feel like this is a rock. This is, <laughs> this is weird. It's, it's, it's like a meteor or something. To truly appreciate what Andy's doing, you need to see the video. <laughs> Please look at us on YouTube. Subscribe, like, share with your friends. I get into it. But uh, after leaving Haskell's home, they pulled over to look inside the trash bags and were astonished to have found body parts and what they said looked like a belly button. Like, oh, that's my. A, it's pretty obvious. Like, that's a weird thing to be like, oh, my God, it's a hand and some toes. Is that a, oh, that's a belly button. That's, that's a, a belly button. I know yep. that's a, that's a, that's an Audi. That's a belly button. <laughs> yep. Yep. But uh, they said they were astonished. They claimed that Haskell told them the body parts were just Halloween props. Uh, they went to a nearby ha- uh, highway patrol station to report what they witnessed but were told to call the Los Angeles Police Department. But when they went to the LAPD's Topanga Station, the laborers were then told by officers there to please just call 911. Just call someone else, please. (laughs) Call 911. Like, won't that phone just ring? Like, if I... (laughs) If I call... If I call 911 where I'm at... (laughs) Want that phone <laughs> right there just ring? <laughs> no, that's not how it works, Andy. It like, goes to it a call dispatch like station across town. Okay? <laughs> yeah, we got, listen, we got to follow proper procedure here. Right, you got to right. call them. They got to call us. Skip, it's, a, yeah. it's a whole thing. You skip you know? some steps, sir. But yeah, I like how he was just like, oh, yeah, it's rocks. And uh, it's just some, some old Halloween decorations in the bag. Uh-huh. Real fresh ones. Yeah. Real fresh Halloween. Very decorations. realistic. You can get them on Amazon. Very very decomposing Halloween decorations. Yeah. <laughs> very smelly. <laughs> but uh, later that day, prosecutors say that Haskell was allegedly seen photographed a short distance from his home disposing of a large trash bag into a dumpster on the 1600 block of Ventura Boulevard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's go to let's just go to a much more public place. Let's go out on Ventura Boulevard and just throw this in a big dumpster. So he had three of them hauled off, but he hauled off one. I guess that, yeah, he didn't get all of them hauled away. Maybe he was still disposing of more of them, trying to make it uh, put in different so, locations. Back up, man. This guy dismembered three people. It seems that way, yes. Out of the blue. Out of the blue, maybe, or there may be a little bit more things are going to come out once they can actually prove this. And yeah, what if... Confessing. The, yeah. There's going to need to be some motive found behind this. What so far, Sam there is Haskell no motive. Four is serial killer, man. Yeah, so far, there hasn't been a motive released. There isn't uh-huh. actually being, being, you know, there's no been confessing. There's no real, you know, direct ties. So once the, once the story begins to unfold, we'll probably get to do another headlines update on this one following up soon. Yeah. But uh, yeah, right now, this guy is just so far like a 
out of the blue killing of three people. Some this Chris is, Watts shit, dude. This is very strange. But following his arrest, Haskell's been held on $2 million bail. He later appeared in the Los Angeles court November 13th for a bond hearing, but only lasted about five minutes where the judge ordered him to be held without bail. So they're pretty sure that this guy is guilty of murdering three people and dismembering their corpses and yep. trying to cover this up around the area and also trying to involve like day laborers in this so that it looked like they were disposing of a body, which you can definitely see if you see, if you were to see four, um, I'm guessing Hispanic day laborers in Southern California disposing of trash bags that you stopped them and said, what are these? And you find it's full of body parts. You can like someone like Haskell would probably assume, oh yeah, they'll just get charged with that crime. Oh yeah, I mean, obviously I, they've got I, the evidence, no questions asked. They won't believe a word they say. On the other hand, I mean, I honestly, I think if these guys would have just thrown these bags on a trailer and not thought nothing about it with a bunch of other trash, maybe they haul off shit for a living, right? Threw it on here and took it to the dump and threw it in there, and nobody would have ever known. You know what I'm saying? Like most people don't look through trash, no matter what. Yeah, I you mean, know. To an extent, yeah. I mean, I have been to a landfill before. I've gotten to take some, you know, been working for a place. I have to take like a bunch of industrial trash out somewhere and have to like, just drive out to a landfill. I don't know. There's a, I've seen some people kind of picking through trash and people throwing some stuff out there. I mean, like, especially when you get a bag and it's, it's clearly not what they tell you it is. They're like, this is a bag of rocks. And you're like, yeah, that wasn't a good, a good choice. Yeah. I think he would have been better off not saying anything. Just like, these are bags. I need these hauled away. Take this garbage yeah. away. away. Don't look exactly. It. It's disgusting. Throw it away. Like, right? It's just, all you gotta say, it's, it's garbage. Don't open it. It stinks. Like, yeah. But to say it's rocks, dude, it's like, are you tr like, how dumb do you think they are or how, like how much are you just pulling this out of your ass when you're trying to figure this out? Like, right. This doesn't seem like it was planned very well at all to me. Like if you're That's asking what, us, no, it's a crime of passion. It, 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 it probably way. was coming to a head and he just lost his shit one day and took it out on all three of them was like, I just don't even want you in my life. Cause they, all three of them were living with him. Yeah. Including their three children as well. So Haskell and his wife had three children together. He didn't harm lived. the children. So far, though, the children have not been harmed. Well, he's arrested now. Yes, he has been arrested. He's been held, he is being held without bond currently. Mm -hmm. So the children are okay, but his his wife and her parents have been reported. You know, they have been missing. I think they are still yet to identify the body, but they do believe it is does belong to his wife. So as yeah. of today, when we were filming this, I do think they're probably going to do a DNA test to prove who the body. Did. Like they can probably get some of his wife's DNA from the home. So uh, once they can actually determine if that's his wife's body. I think they can definitely determine whether or not they can charge him with the the murders of the other two as well. Right. But hopefully they're going to be able to locate all the all of the bodies and actually be able to, you know, figure out why this happened. Cuz yeah, like Michael said, this seems like a Chris Watt situation where you're almost looking like a I just want to get away from all this and start a new life. Right. But you know, with someone like Chris Watts, he was a family annihilator. He took out everyone, but for this guy to only take out his wife and her parents, yeah. It's like a how do you see getting away with this? Like, how do you, like you live there with your three children yeah. and you dismembered corpses and cut, like put them away in bags. Oof. You're, I don't see how you're planning on getting away with this. this uh, it, I don't either. Could this be an insanity plea? Could this be, could, you know, could this be some kind like of I said, no, drug thing? I think, I think you hit the nail on the head. Somebody who's really never been told no their whole life. Right. And now they got into a relationship where they are living where they are living with someone from a different culture for one, right? And her parents, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And then that's, so that's three on one as far as adults go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As far as household decisions and things like that. And I think that's a very controversial uh, environment for someone who's gotten their own way and been able to buy their way out of every scenario. Mm -hmm. But in your own home, it don't work out that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're, it doesn't really matter who your dad is anymore. It doesn't matter that your dad no. has all these famous friends and has all yeah. these. When your in-laws don't care, yeah. when your wife is like wants to be a, like a, a loving daughter to her parents and give them a home and stuff, and yeah. you have, have more of a different idea of what your and life also, should be like. If they were more traditional, you know, they have a very, very high view of marriage. You know, divorce may not have been an option in her cult, in in her beliefs. As an option, you know that's, that's a very well point. That's a good other point of view as well. I, yeah. I really don't know what the relationship was. I don't know as much about his <clears throat> wife's history and their family's beliefs. But yeah, if you have a, a wife with her parents living in the home, you have three kids as well. 
we've seen a lot of family annihilators who just, they try and take out everyone and either make a run for it or they take themselves out. But this is, mm. this, like Michael said, this seems like a crime of passion. This seems like something he was not planning and something he tried to cover up sloppily. I don't know. I just, that's just yep. what it seems like to me. And I can't wait to really see what the, the confession might be or what the investigation turns out. Cause like I said, I don't, I don't know if it, I see serial killer. I see, you know, I see no, some Hollywood. No, no. It's kid. a crime of passion. I see some Hollywood kid who grew up on movie sets and saw a bunch of movie stuff where they cut the bodies up and they just do this. And he probably thought, oh, it looks so easy in the movies. I've seen how they do this. And now he realizes it's not as easy as it actually is to just, just to fucking cut up a body and dispose without getting caught. And now he's just running into all these problems of being right. like, oh, I can't just buy my way out. Right. Who's he think he is? Ray De- Roy DeMeo? Whoa, ah. look at that call back over there. Who's he think he is? The Butcher of Brooklyn. That's right. He's no butcher. But no, like I said, I feel like that's Man. what this guy is. He grew up on movie sets. He grew up yeah. around actors. He grew up in this Hollywood environment. And he's, you know, he grew up very privileged. He grew up in a lot of parties and a lot of mansions and all these kind of environments. I feel like this is a crime of passion that got very much out of hand that somebody almost thought, I, oh, I, I, I know what I can do. I grew up with, I've seen this done a million times on yep. sets. And you're like, yep. it's not the same, buddy. A pro, no, like no. a, you know, a, a movie leg is not the same as a real leg. No, not at all. <clears throat> but guys, like we, like Andy said, we will keep our finger on the pulse of this case because I do think a lot more is going to come out. I really think he's dead in the water here. Um, it's just with all the evidence that they have already and just the fact that he was trying to get people to carry the bodies away in trash bags. Like, there's no way you don't know that. Okay. Yeah. The smell alone. I mean, you know, that guy was sweating bullets. He probably could have used some Oh My Gaia, Andy. Oh My Gaia, Michael? You he think that may have probably could have. That could have covered up some of the smell of those bags right there, man. If you uh, put that in there, he, just he would need a lot of it, but yeah. Yeah, really just dip the whole bag in a jar. And- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so one way to cover this up, I have to just basically just make the bag out of Oh My Gaia. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Guys, if you don't know what Oh My Gaia is, it's an innovative all-natural deodorant, fragrance, and beard oil company specializing in paraben and aluminum-free products. And Oh My Gaia has tons of amazing scents to choose from, from vanilla, cherry, almond, sandalwood, lavender, lemongrass, Egyptian musk, coconut, dreamsicle, leather, lumberjack, honeysuckle, uh, sweet pea, sailor, barbershop, and of course we have our own sent here at true crime guys it's called true crime pine has our og podcast logo on it still available at ohmygaia.com or at shop underscore oh my Gaia on instagram and because you guys are true crime guys listeners you can use the code word creeper for 15 percent off your order that's c-r-e-e-p-e-r for 15 percent off your order again that's ohmygaia.com o-h-m-y-g-a-i-a.com Guys, you will not regret it. I swear, Mike, you're getting better and better at that every time. I feel like you're just going to start just have I about, this Have all. I about nailed it? You, I feel like you do, man. It's going to get faster and faster and faster. I've done like 300 times. <laughs> <laughs> I've done this 100 times. Still can't remember the opening line. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the teleprompter is for, Mike. That's right. That's right. But guys, thanks for listening. Uh, if you're on, if you're watching on YouTube, please smash that subscribe button, leave a comment below if you got a suge- case suggestion or anything else. Um, also, if you haven't, please check us out on Patreon, Patreon.com/slash True Crime Guys, where you can get access to hundreds of other episodes and files and sideshows that we've done over the years and are still doing and adding to now, like Sandu Stories, uh, Part Two of Devil Ja Vu will be coming out very soon. We just released a video on Patreon of some outtakes of uh, of our dear Andy here. Mention all three of the mothers calling me all damn night wanting updates. Sudden knock on the door and it opens a bro- Wait, hold on. That just says it. That's not in the fucking thing. <laughs> Sudden knock. <laughs> <laughs> fucking stage line. Stage notes. Stage notes. <laughs> God damn it, who didn't put the italics on the teleprompter? You knew it was gonna... Said so knock on the door and open the public. <laughs> Fucking narrate what happens in my office. I'm just kind of one of those guys. I'm a bit of a tism sometimes. It's just one of the things. Get the door. It opens abruptly. I said a sudden knock at the door and it opens abruptly. I can't get that high anymore. It's a uh, It's a hilarious video. You guys need to check it out. I Again. basically just got to play a bunch of characters and just switch back and forth. <laughs> it's just a bunch of me just being like, which voice sounds better, kid? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's a lot of fun, guys. It's it, You get to see uh, some of the more fun side of the audio theater, not all the staring at a screen for hours lining up tiny little pieces of audio. But uh, <laughs> it's neither here nor there. The sprinkles. But again, guys, patreon.com slash true crime, guys. That is the wheels of the podcast. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting us on there. But uh, I think that's about it. We, uh, we released a regular episode on Patreon this week. We have music available wherever you listen to music. Look up True Crime Guys. We got two albums out, Trues and Tragedies, and also Killer Mixtape. Um, what else am I forgetting, Andy? Merch. We got merch. Click down below, True Crime Guys, Linktree. And we have multiple merch shops with all kinds of items, with all sorts of different art and logos from over the years and all kinds of good stuff for you, from mouse pads to... to insulated cups to coffee cups to what else andy shower curtains you get a shower curtain i don't know whatever you want to get not tattoo There's, who gets a tattoo you, get a tattoo maybe a temporary tattoo they might be available on there shit i don't know but yeah we got we got a few merch sites on there uh i suggest threadless it's it's one of my favorites they have very quality very good quality shirts i mean they're all they're all all right but threadless is is one of my favorites but I think that's about it, guys. Uh, we'll be back next week with a regular True Crime Guys case. Mm-hmm. And uh, until then, I guess you'll just have to keep on creeping. Yeah, like I said, like uh, we mentioned this on our oh, Patreon Andy episode. The outro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna have to go right. I have to interrupt yep. you one thing. Go ahead. Say, now I got to do the thing again. Go, the go holidays ahead. are coming up, guys. Uh-huh. We wanted to tell you guys too. We are gonna continue to put out stuff throughout the holidays. Don't think you're gonna keep missing any kind of True Crime Guys content. We're gonna try and keep putting out some Patreon content yeah. for our YouTube. We're gonna try and put out a few other things for you guys during the holidays but you're not going to miss out on anything throughout the holidays yeah we're gonna right. try and come back the new year with a few other cases so if you have any other suggestions please send them our way yeah if christmas falls on a wednesday probably won't be an episode but other than that i think we'll make it work guys i think we'll make it work but uh yeah so until then you'll just have to keep on creeping is that okay andy you good now what oh no. bye <laughs>